Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. All right, so welcome back to the second part of lecture 12. Um, now we are going to sort of, you know, formally define and, and model, provide a model for the, for the variogram. How do we sort of conceptualize it mathematically when we have, uh, you know, when we have data. So on the right uh, top corner of your screen, you see an origin 0 comma 0 and two locations given by vector s and vector s plus h okay h is obviously a lag vector right and when i talk about lag, uh, you know location s it has two coordinates x and y right it has coordinates sx comma sy sorry about that okay we'll correct it in a minute Okay, it is Sx comma Sy, right? And S plus H is again, you can think of these as coordinates S tilde X and S tilde Y. All right. Uh, now, basically when we say, you know, Sx comma Sy or X comma Y, we are simply joining, you know, uh, a, a vector from the origin, which goes S x units uh, horizontally and S y units, uh, you know, vertically, right? And we are trying to understand spatial dependence or spatial contiguity measures between points S and S plus H, right? S plus H could also be defined as S2, right? So S could be S1, the point, you know, and the south is S1 and the north is S2. Uh, as, as, as remarked earlier, H is accounting for both the distance between points S1 and S2 in space and also the direction. The direction being that it's closer to a northwest direction moving from S1 to S2. Okay. So having known that, uh, what we uh, you know, what we have is the definition of a uh, variogram. That is, we have the following, that variance of z of s1, s1 being a vector, minus z of s2 is given as 2 gamma as a function of the distance between vectors s1 and S2 given as the L2 norm. Okay, um, this is true for all S1 and S2 that belong to the domain D, and domain D is a stationary domain, uh, you know, uh, without doubt. Okay, now the quantity 2 gamma S1 minus S2 is called a variogram, no surprises there, right? It is a function of S1 minus S2, which is the definition of this vector H, which is the lag vector. Gamma by itself, by itself is called a semi-variogram right by convention and it is also known as I'm going to say also known as a structural function in meteorology uh, fluid mechanics and so on 
right? So if they are students of meteorology uh, taking this course or fluid mechanics taking this course, they may have come across something called a structural function. Well, it's nothing but the semi-radiogram that we are studying here, right? It is known as a, uh, you know, mean squared difference, right? It is, this is a quite a literal translation. And if you have heard of this, you are most likely coming from, you know, uh, some, a background where you've used time series quite a bit, right? So if you are, if you are or have been a time series analyst, you must have come across this mean squared distance, uh, right? And this mean squared distance is the analog of the semi-radiogram in space, right? Of course, we know that there's a difference between time series data and, and, and spatial data is that time series data is unidirectional, right? It doesn't go in all directions possible, right? So it, it is not a multidirectional process, it's a unidirectional process. Also, it is a, you know, uh, 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 you know, you, you have discrete time points in space, right? So there is between T1 and T2, T1 and a half doesn't really become a unit of analysis. Whereas in case of spatial data between T1 and T2, T1 and a half, T1 a third, uh, you know, T1 plus T1 third or T1 plus T2 by two, these are all, you know, legitimate, uh, 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 you know, uh, spatial entities, okay? Now, what we are going to go do going forward is we are going to study the properties of a radiogram. So the first property is that notice that gamma of h is going to be equal to gamma of minus h, okay? What does that mean? Gamma of h being is equal to gamma of minus h. That basically means that the measure of spatial contiguity that is derived from this device called semi-variogram is going to be the same if you, if you were to start from S1 and go to S2 or start from S2 and come to S1. It won't really matter to this measure of, uh, you know, uh, 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 spatial dependence, right? And it shouldn't, right? It's basically spatial dependence between S1 and S2. It doesn't matter if I'm going from S1 to S2 or S coming from S2 to S1, right? Okay. Um, where H is nothing but S1 minus S2, okay? And minus H would be S2 minus S2, S1. So the, sec the L2 norm of S1 minus S2 is mathematically the same entity as the L2 norm of S2 minus S1, okay? Second, we have gamma of zero, gamma of zero is equal to zero, okay? So if there is no distance, right? So we are basically looking at the same entity. So variance of ZS1 minus itself, this will be exactly zero, right? And very, very critically, and um, as H approaches zero, you know, we may have uh, gamma H equals C0, which is a non-zero entity that is non-zero. Okay, this C0 is called as the nugget effect. It is known as the nugget effect. And it captures what is called as uh, 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 the micro scale variation in spatial data. in spatial data. What this means is that if S2 were very, very close, if S2 were exactly S1, gamma is zero. If S2 were very, very close and it's approaching S1, right, in the sense that H is 
approaching zero, right? If H is approaching zero, then, you know, if we have some kind of a micro scale variation, it's called as a nugget effect. The term nugget comes from, uh, you know, gold mines. So, you know, when, when uh, you know, gold sort of exists as these nuggets, right? Uh, these are the smallest possible entities uh, that exist in space. That would mean that, you know, a nugget and its core, a nugget is large enough that you would have to move a slightly farther away to be able to sort of get, uh, you know, the smallest possible entity from the core, right? It, 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 it is a nugget, you can look it up, right? And this nugget has characteristically different variation properties than, you know, the coal that exists around itself. Right? So, these nuggets are distinctly different entities that in which the coal, you know, in which gold, uh, you know, occurs beneath the surface. Right? So, the term nugget comes from, you know, <laughs> the gold mining process and of course, spatial statistic that, that means its genesis sort of happens from, uh, you know, has, has come from there. Right? These micro scale variations are, are kind of distinct enough that we have to you know, we have given a, a, we have coined a separate term for them, right? So let's sort of move forward with the properties and, and, and while we do that, we will be able to sort of understand, uh, you know, few more properties of the number, of the nugget effect, right? So I'm going to write this down again on the same page, on the, on the next page, so that we can have a continuity in discussion. So we said that uh, uh, property two was that, uh, gamma 0 is 0 and as h approaches 0, we have that gamma of h approaches C0 and this C0 is called as the nugget effect, the nugget effect, okay. Uh, now, note that C0 could be measurement error, right? So it may not be, you know, in fact, a micro scale variation, it may be measurement error. I mean, in fact, we, I mean, you know, after all, we are really closing down to a location in space beneath the surface and try and measure and define micro scale variations, right? So they, they may not be a real thing. In fact, in practice, we can't really measure them. Right. In practice, what happens or practically what happens is we have data, which is let's say ZSI such that I is, uh, you know, is location one, location two, location three, all, with, all the way till location N, right. Let's say these are our data. Uh, and, and, and we usually sort of, you know, and, and usually we do not uh, have uh, you know, uh, you know, the data availability, the available data uh, do not provide us an opportunity to comment upon, uh, you know, the situation where H is indeed very, very small. You have to understand that to be able to measure micro scale variation, we need to have data sets uh, where samples over space are, you know, collected in, in close proximity to each other. We have seen many examples till now and what we know is that that probably never really happens. So we never have data with lag approaching to zero. So if we have no data that where lag is not approaching zero, we can't really practically measure micro scale, uh, you know, uh, 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 variation. That means, that means usually, right, I'm not going to say this is, you know, an exhaustive case, but usually we cannot uh, evaluate or estimate uh, C0 
using real world data sets okay and and now so of course now we know that you know c0 which is the nugget effect is a physical real world phenomenon it's a phenomenon we may not be able to do it practically we may not have the device to do that but it is indeed a phenomenon right so so what do we do right how do we go around evaluating or estimating c0 so to that effect a workaround was provided or offered by matheron in 1962 what's the uh, what's the workaround so matheron suggested that we specify uh, c0 as c ms plus c m e now so basically he he suggested that we decompose the mi micro scale variation in two parameters c m s that is a constant and also c m e now c m e without a surprise is you know uh, due to measurement error right that means this this variable will be completely random this is out of our control it's it's happening due to exogenous you know uh, uh, reasons that we as analysts cannot control at all right anything about it nothing about these are systemic they are completely random processes so i'm going to say fully random cms is the nugget effect or micro scale variation right so uh, uh, i'm going to say micro scale variation that is modeled as uh, a white noise process okay what does it mean when i say that c m s is going to be modeled as a white noise process all i mean is that me that is c m s is distributed normally with you know the lower sort of bound being greater than 0 so you know uh, you know so it's always greater than 0 and it could be as large as infinity so it's a positive number of course we are looking at a variation measure we don't have negative variation measures we have positive variation measure right variance is a second moment property so c0 is a second moment property right so it can't be a negative number so it's truncated it's not fully random it can't go from minus infinity to plus infinity but it is quite random right and 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 it's it's a truncated normal distribution with mean mu ms and variance sigma squared ms right so i can visualize that you know c m s will be a positive number and you know it will sort of follow a distribution which looks like the normal the half bell curve the right hand side with the zero being not included okay so this is normal truncated normal sorry about that truncated normal with mean mu ms and variance sigma squared ms now in most practical applications c0 is predicted from given data and cme is assumed to be zero right so i'm just going to leave a note here that in most applications in most applications uh c0 is predicted so we are going to conduct prediction on unknown values right we talked about prediction meaning we are going to ex you know exploit the dependent spatial contiguity structure and try and tell what's happening in the micro scale neighborhood so we are going to conduct prediction and not estimation by observations right so we are going to conduct prediction for c0 from given data and in most cases we are going to assume 
measurement error CME uh, uh, to be just zero. Okay, unless we have some you know information about where the measurement error could could arise from, right? Some of my ongoing research suggests that, for example, in in groundwater monitoring, uh, the measurement error indeed arise due to things like you know human reporting so you know there is a there is a monitoring well and, and, and a human being is going on to the well and manually noting down the depth of groundwater level there could be human error right there could be measurement errors due to the fact that the well got choked right there might be silting and you know the water can't really flow through so whatever you are seeing is not a measure of reality because you know the water either couldn't flow out or water couldn't flow in to reflect the the, the levels around this well right the wells could be could 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 even sort of you know they become closed because of certain reasons right so the measurement errors can be realistically uh, you know systematic uh, directional you know something that we can understand but you know usually uh, you know uh, uh, you know they are assumed to be zero so unless we have information where measurement error may arise from we will assume it to be it to be zero okay all right so moving forward now we are looking at properties so we will we'll, we'll look at the third property after this so the third property is that if the variogram 2 gamma is continuous it's a continuous function at the origin if it's continuous at origin then we say that z which is our spatial random process is l2 continuous what does l2 continuous mean so i'm just going to say meaning that expectation of zs1 minus zs2 squared okay so it's the expectation of squared of first difference right so mean value of the first difference right first squared difference mean value of squared difference right okay zs1 minus zs2 this will approach 0 at the origin that is h when h goes to 0 when h goes to 0 you have a situation where you know uh, you know the variogram value will start to diminish that is the expectation of the difference squared value between you know observations at any two locations will you know approach to zero okay so then gamma is a continuous function right it's a continuous function at the origin remember we are talking about at the origin right we can have obviously we can have the converse being true that is if if you know 2 gamma does not approach zero right does not approach 0 at the origin that means it is test continuous at the origin if it is discontinuous if 2 gamma that is a variogram is uh, you know discontinuous at the origin then we say that z is not l2 continuous right that means that this condition that expectation zs1 minus zs2 squared will now be not approaching to 0 will not approach to 0 as h approaches 0 right such a process is considered is considered to be a spatially irregular process so or irregular spatial process okay now this discontinuity this discontinuity 
at the origin at the origin is called as or known as the you would have guessed it by now the nugget effect Okay, I mean, obviously, we have we have already known we already know the notation that is it is C zero. Okay, the next property is that if two gamma h is a positive constant. Okay, if two gamma h is a positive constant of course we are going to talk about positive constant except at the origin at the origin you know we expect it to be either zero or a micro scale variation uh, measured by the nugget effect that we have talked about earlier if 2 gamma h is a positive constant that is 2 gamma h is some k constant Okay, and k is not a function of h. So now gamma h doesn't does not vary by h. It doesn't matter what is the distance between two locations. It is just a constant. Now, what do we expect then? You know the variogram representing. Uh, then, you know z of s one and z of s two. That is the values at two different locations are spatially uncorrelated okay i mean for all s1 and uh, not equal to s2 regardless regardless of how close these two points are in space these two points or locations Right, so when I say these two locations, I mean S1 and S2 are in space, right? If the variogram value does not vary by H, then what you're looking at is a spatially random process, right? You're going to start to look at the left-hand side panels that we looked at, uh, you know, as part of lecture 12, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the previous part of it, right, in part A of it. So, so that's, that's why, you know, the variogram provides us a measure of spatial dependence or spatial contiguity over space, right. Uh, it's a legitimate uh, measure in that, uh, you know, in that spirit. Okay. So, let's move forward. We have, we'll look at one more property uh, of the variogram, you know, before we sort of uh, move on to the covariogram and the correlogram. Okay, so if we say if two gamma s one minus s two, I'm going to say the L two norm, which is nothing but you know, this is equivalent to two gamma h, right? This is equal to to gamma naught s1 minus s2 that is now the you know uh, 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 now we have the distance as a you know multiplier uh, uh, to a constant to gamma naught right so this gamma naught is a constant this is like saying you know i could say this is just 2 k h okay where k is a constant right then what are we looking at we say that 2 gamma that is the variogram that we have estimated or figured evaluated from the data is called as an isotropic isotropic variogram such a variogram sort of you know uh, represents what we call as a isotropic spatial process. Now, the antonym of a isotropic spatial process is an isotropic spatial process. If you come from physical, natural sciences, earth sciences, ge geology, etc., 
you would understand what isotropic and, and isotropic processes are. Uh, perhaps, perhaps from natural sciences, uh, physical sciences, you will understand it better. For those who have not heard of, you know, isotropic versus an isotropic situations, let's look at a figure and, 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 and see what an, an isotropic process is. So in this figure on the, on the left, what you see is a, is a, you know, a schematic of a factory over space which has a smoke plume and of course you know because the factory sort of goes on to sort of produce whatever it produces it also produces smoke as a byproduct which is a social bad right the pollution causes health problems uh, you know visibility problems it's a it's considered a social bad uh, you know uh, uh, typically now the distribution of pollution over space is something that can be modeled using a variogram or different spatial dependence devices, right? Everything that we have studied about groundwater is also true about spatial, uh, sorry, for about pollution or pollutants uh, uh, above the ground. The only difference is we don't see them either, right? Just like we don't see, uh, you know, uh, groundwater beneath the surface, we can't really see pollutants. Uh, typically, we can't see, of course, in Delhi, if you have if you're in the winter season and you have smog, of course you can see pollution with your eyes. But you can't really tell apart where the, where that, uh, you know, the smog density is, uh, you know, changing. Is there a gradient? Of course, if it's very high or it's too small, right? So, so, so either visibility is clear or it's unclear or it may be really bad. So we have this discrete understanding of data over space, uh, you know, using our, our visual interpretation. But in order to measure pollution, you will need devices. Uh, you will have to install air pollution monitoring devices. And depending on where you install these devices, you're going to sort of able to get a sample of different levels of air pollution, right? In this realistic real or real world situation, what happens is that the way pollution disperses over space depends on the direction of the wind, right? If the direction of the wind is from east to west, you will have higher dispersion, a carryover effect of the wind in the east to west direction. If the wind is very sort of strong, then you will have a quicker dispersion of pollution. If the wind is uh, not so strong or wind systems are weak that day, you are going to have less dispersion and higher propensity of observing a smog situation, right? But what this wind is doing, it's giving a structure to the way spatial data are going to be, you know, distributed in space, right? So if you look at, you know, the figure that is down below, uh, you know, what you see here is, is, is the center of point where, you know, pollution was being emitted. So this is the plume, right? And from the plume, in, in the direction that is opposite to the, to the direction of the wind, the dispersion is quite small or it's happening, you know, in a, over a small area, land area or surface area than in the direction of the wind, right? So, of course, the wind is going in, is in the east direction. So, you have a higher, you know, you have a higher sort of dispersion, to higher, stronger degree of dispersion in the eastward direction than you see in the west direction, in fact, also in the north and the south directions. Although in north and south directions, you can't really differentiate between them, right? So this process is isotropic in the north-south direction. You can, you can sort of, you can, if, in order to understand the distinction between north and south. And if we had a similar thing going on in the east-west direction as well, we would not be looking at an ellipse, rather we will be looking at circles, right? We will be looking at concentric circles. So if, if dispersion happens in concentric circles, that is no direction is favored against the other, those processes are called as isotropic processes. And the process that you see on your screen where certain direction, any one direction in, in, in the two-dimensional space is has a different process of dispersion or different process of evolution of spatial data than the other, then you have what is called as an isotropic process. You can imagine a similar process going on with, you know, groundwater recharge uh, beneath the ground. Well, when groundwater sort of, you know, when, when precipitation happens and, and water enters the ground, 
what's happening is gravity is pulling the water down. And there's going to be an isotropy because of the gravitational, uh, you know, process, gravitational pull, uh, you know, towards the ground. So, so if you are measuring, if your interest is in spatial statistics that are lateral in nature, well and good. But if you are studying or measuring, you know, spatial processes that are vertical in nature beneath the ground, then perhaps one should be worried about anisotropy. And in those situations, we have to separately estimate or evaluate or study a variogram in, you know, the east-west direction and then separately in the north-south direction, in the direction of which is the origin of anisotropy, okay? So anisotropy is a physical process. It complicates the situation for, uh, you know, spatial statisticians and spatial econometricians, so analysts like ourselves or data analysts. Uh, however, for this course, when we study variogram, the variogram estimation, evaluation, calculation, we will focus solely on isotropic processes. So, so I'm not going to, as part of this course, go over, uh, you know, those situations, but, you know, uh, because the focus of this course is most, more on, 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 you know, also econometrics, which is to say that we are going to talk about social data and econometric data uh, and, 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 you know, with social data, I, I'm not sure, but you know, I, I, I've not sort of, um, you know, I've not seen applications which uh, uh, deal with uh, anisotropic data, right? Although they, I'm not, I'm not ruling them out, but they are, the scope is small enough that in this course we are going to keep those out of uh, out, out out from our discussions. Okay, so we are going to sort of you know end this part here. And in the next part, we are going to spend some time, perhaps it will be a short lecture on uh, the covariogram and the correlogram. Okay, so see you in the next part. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.